Welcome back YouTube. Today is a push day. So we have changed the splits, but the sessions haven't really changed. So what we're trialing is a little bit more frequency in regards to sessions and set days because it works pretty well with what we have going on in our work lives for us to do set days. Not so much just with online coaching, but some other things that we have going on. And a little bit more frequency is always appealing to any bodybuilder because if I can be in the gym more frequent than being resting, to me, mentally, that makes me feel a little bit better, which I do sometimes think is a huge advocate of progression, the actual enjoyment that you do get. So we're gonna trial it and see. My sessions aren't much different. The amount of volume that I do have in my sessions isn't much different. It's just my sessions are slightly different because obviously I have a huge focus on needing to keep my posterior big, especially my glutes and hamstrings. I have glutes sat on some sessions that I wouldn't usually. So I have my one of my pull sessions, which is more now like a density session where I'm doing a, my hip hinge for the week and some additional glute work and then I also have some glute stuff at the start of one of my push sessions. So the actual amount of volume that I'm still getting in those areas that I need is the same. Um, it's just that it's split out a little bit differently compared to kind of just tagging at the end of legs or tagging at the end of one of my pull sessions. So I'm actually really excited to get stuck into it. The idea of a density session was really appealing to me because I used to do it back in, I think it was 2020, 2021. And I absolutely loved it. Like if anybody loves to train and wants a really hard session, density is just one of them because you think that you're done because you've done all your leg stuff and then like you've got more to do. So it's, it's really hard. I find like the upper body, lower body, so the upper lower little sessions that are like mixed together are very challenging mentally and physically. And if you're like me and you, and you love that, then it's just a no-brainer of putting it into your sessions at some point. So I've done this split now for the last week. I know it's only a week, but I enjoyed it. I actually felt a little bit kind of fuller off the back of just training a little bit more as well. So I feel good, recovery felt good. So we'll just see how we go over these next couple of weeks and I'll definitely keep you posted on whether we keep it up. But today's push, so I'll go through it as I go through because I know that I've spoken a little bit now. So you're gonna have my pre, which is uh, 20 grams of pumpage, five grams of creatine, five grams of glutamine. Yeah, did I just say creatine and then glutamine? Okay, and then I'm gonna train. So hopefully we'll get a little pump because I'm quite flat for me, because obviously I'm trying to push for condition. So I don't know if a pump's gonna happen, but we'll see. <laughs> and I'm obviously a bit cold because I've got a long sleeve t-shirt and a big jumper on. So definitely getting a little bit leaner. Right, my first exercise is the single arm thigh raise. Obviously, prior to starting my first exercise, I haven't done a lot of warming up because I don't really feel the need to. I feel ready to go. I've done a couple of movements to get my body moving and not tax myself too much to the point where I'm feeling fatigued. I just feel like I'm warm, have a little bit of a pump, which is nice, um, and about to get into my first exercise. So the single arm sideways, well, Y raise, you can actually see me do it here. Instead of on the prime machine, where obviously it's a little bit more fancy and not a lot of machines, not a lot of gyms have that machine, you can see me set it up on a cable that you will have in your gym, just so that obviously you know how to set it up and how you can do it yourself. But you want to stand behind the cable, or behind the pole, should you save the cable. Put your arm into it so that you can brace. Really think about keeping your arm right in front of your belly button, protracting the shoulder out forward, and then really reaching out on a Y before you bring that arm back down. gets really really heavy really quickly. Bloody Nora. <laughs> So 
my first three sets on my first exercise, I do a Y raise. In my last set, I do a lateral raise. It's basically just to target the delt from kind of all points. Yes, you are going to hit your lateral delt, obviously, when you do a Y raise. But that is why I am doing it, in case you're asking why the last set looks slightly different to the first three. So, alright, that does. I can definitely feel that I'm getting a little bit leaner because when I do movements that are a little bit heavier, I just feel a little bit less stable in my position. I need to get like somebody to hold me down so I can still get to work. I'm having a nightmare. I'll just put it there. It's going to be a very terrible shot. I slid forwards by about 10 centimetres. Oh, that felt good. Heavy, but very good. Was I control? Okay, good. So first set, that was really great. I moved a load that I've not moved before and I managed to get just one less rep. So I was happy, very happy with how it was set up. Managed to give myself a little nosebleed from pushing so hard, but it is what it is. is a very boring session to film isn't it i'm very sorry guys but hopefully you find it exciting so obviously this machine is a little bit more like a flat press i don't really need to do a flat press because i don't need massive pecs so I position myself on an incline on the bench so that the press is more like an incline but this actual machine and its res resistance profile is too good not to use which is why I'm manipulating it in a way that's good for me. I need front delt, upper pec, I don't need like massive pecs. I have implants there to give me a chest and I don't want to ruin my implants either so that's why I do it like that. That was, lo that was lovely jubbly, felt nice and smooth, didn't feel like my nose is going to pop, fantastic stuff. Oh, what a 
bastard. Next exercise is dips. So at this gym they don't have a, um, what's it called, a machine dip, which is fine. Uh, we're just going to do the bodyweight dips. I can't add any weight around my belly at the minute. Um, maybe I'll, I'll be able to as I get a little bit leaner, so maybe if I try this and it feels a little bit too easy, then I'll stop it and I'll add a little bit of weight. But the rep range is kind of 10 to 15, so I'm not too sure if I'll be able to do any weight on here. So when it comes to a dip, one of the most common mistakes that we see, or a few of the common mistakes that you see, is the belly going a little bit too kind of wibbly wobbly, going really fast down, and then trying to come up really slow, and then also trying to drive your elbows too far backwards. If you do that, a lot of us don't have the mobility to be able to get the range of motion that you need for a dip by driving your elbows just straight back. So you almost want to track your elbows out a little bit and backwards. You can let your scapulas move so that you almost go into a little bit of retraction. That's my time effort. As you come down to allow for that last little bit of depth before you drive back up. The tempo needs to be slow on the way down, fast on the way back up. I mean, I've not watched it back yet, but it felt pretty great, so that's what matters most. My leg, my leg felt long enough to get out of that <laughs> comfortably. Right, next movement is reverse flies. So obviously because we have changed our split a little bit, my sessions have become a little bit more mixed. So obviously I used to do my reverse flies on a pull day alongside my bicep work used to be on a pull day but because we've now got a little bit of lower body on my pull days some of my little bits of arm work little bit of rear delt work has now made its way into push meaning that these sessions are a little bit heavier in terms of volume but overall volume is still the same if that makes sense but it's actually quite nice because I used to finish my push sessions probably about 45 minutes before Cuba so having to wait around at the gym for that long sometimes it's a little bit annoying so obviously it just means that we'll probably finish at a similar time as well and my sessions now will align with his a little bit more too so it's quite nice that when obviously he's not sick we'll be able to train alongside each other as well Right, rear delt, rear delt flies. A few of the common mistakes that you see is that the people kind of keep their shoulders up by their ears. When you do that and you get a lot of shoulder elevation, you do use a lot more of your traps than obviously your rear delts. You can't turn off your traps when you do a rear delt, but you can try and do the movement well to the point that your traps are more a secondary muscle group than obviously a primary. So obviously you want your primary to be your rear delts, but all the, move, all the muscles around it are always going to work. So, what we like to do is keep our shoulder in our joints, not thinking about depression with the, shot, with the scapulas, but thinking about keeping them in your joints. When you have your arms in front of you, you wanna make sure that you've got tension on before you start your fly. So you wanna get your hands forwards, push them out a little bit. That's your start and stop point. Then you drag out to just 
to parallel with your shoulders and then you bring them back to that point. Much like a side raise, a lot of the things that you see on here is people come all the way to the point where this is then turned off. People on a side raise bring their arm all the way down to their leg. Their delt is obviously completely void of tension at that point and then you're trying to create tension and then you've got no tension. It's just making the movement easier. So you want to keep tension on at all points. Get a little bit of tension. That's your start and end point. Out and in. movement is single arm cable tricep extension I'm doing it more like a cross body tricep extension because I love cross body tricep extensions they're my favorite movement but the cables are a little bit busy in here so that's why I've opted for a single arm variation so what I do is I bring my elbow a tiny little bit away from my body just so that it kind of doesn't get in the way so that I can create a little bit of tension through popping my lap a little bit into my tricep then as my forearm comes up, I let it come all the way up into my bicep. I let my elbow sit back a little bit so I can get the most amount of stretch, but not to the point where it's coming in and out. If you do find that you're moving your arm a lot when you do a tricep extension, you'll probably use a lot more lat than you are using triceps. So try to keep it as still as possible. And then as you drive the arm through, you're focusing on straightening your arm as much as possible so that you can get your tricep shot. A lot of people, what you see is they go, and that's kind of their tricep extension, which is not for your tricep. So try it how I am, and it'll blow up the tricep dramatically. Oh, nearly. Nearly. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody no. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do much more weight than that. That's pathetic. biceps in the world either that or maybe I do it properly and with good tempo and that's why I'm so weak <laughs> no I'm just weak <laughs> so my last exercise well kind of last exercise I have got the toe press uh, but that's just kind of a little an additional top up because I'm not doing cards at the end of legs anymore given the fact that the leg sessions are already still absolutely massive and um, so I'm doing the my bicep kills here is my second to last exercise with the d handles single arm on the cable here you want to make sure that you are fully straightening your arm and coming into full contraction you find that a lot of people want to get really big arms especially as a guy 
um, and I know that I'm not a guy and I know that I'm not an open pro bodybuilder and I don't have massive arms but I, I have pretty decent arms for a, a lady who only trains them every seven days but the worst thing that people do is they do such short range of motion they use so much weight they throw it from A to B if you not if you're someone who's not got genetically great arms it's probably only going to get you so far so you want to make sure that you are coming down into a full stretch you do want to keep a little bit of a flexion into your wrist so instead of being like fully flat you want to give a little bit of flexion into your wrist that will create a little bit more tension into your bicep that you want to fully straighten out and then you want to really fully curl through to the point where you're thinking about your little finger coming over your shoulder and that will get you into a really nice little bit of contraction before you then keep repeating that process and if you can get a lot of weight doing it like that then I take you, my hat off to you, I don't have a hat so I'll take my clip off to you because it's really bloody hard That's the end of my first session here at North Leeds. Had a really good session, really enjoyed it. I had a tiny little bit of extra volume in my session compared to the last time I did it here, just given the fact of what I've spoken about already in the session. And everything progressed really well, so I'm actually really, really, really happy with that. I felt like I got a little bit of a pump, which is also obviously very nice, especially right now. Um, so yeah. I do my uh, check-in pictures tomorrow, so looking forward to seeing what they look like. Hopefully, we've seen a nice little shift in body composition. So obviously, we'll just wait and see and see what Cooper says. But I had a food drop yesterday, as you'll see that in my full day of eating. So all of the bread has gone, so it's very sad. I'm hoping that when I do my uh, diet break and deload, he gives me some bread. He can get rid of all my fucking rice, but I'll, I'll have some bread. <laughs> I'm not bothered. I'll go carb free, but just give me some bread. <laughs> yeah, please like, share, subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the push session. Please make sure that you tune in for the full day of eating because I go through all of my food for the day on there.